Hello and welcome to the channel. I'd like to say thank you to Kat for inviting me to assist with this presentation. She thought it would be good to do some content on muscle tissue and the role that muscle tissue plays in changing a person's body composition. There's going to be a lot of content covered, so feel free to pause the video at any time and review the material until you feel comfortable. So with that, let's get started. If you look at the diagram on the screen, you will see that your muscle tissue is 70 to 75 percent water. Now, when most people learn this, they're very surprised because they're under the assumption that your muscle tissue is primarily protein. But protein is only 18 to 23 percent, followed by lipids, glycogen, and mineral salts. Now, lipids is just another word for fats, but glycogen needs a little more explanation. So glycogen is glucose, which most people understand is sugar. So to understand the difference, if you've ever eaten a fresh peach, think of that like glucose moving through your blood. And if you've ever purchased a can of peaches that you store in your cupboard for later use, that is the equivalent of glycogen. So glycogen is stored in your muscle tissue it is just a different form of glucose that your body can use at a later time. Now mineral salts, some examples of mineral salts are calcium, phosphorus, sodium, potassium, and magnesium. The next question you want to ask yourself is, since your muscle tissue is primarily water, what does that mean? Well, with that, we're going to go to the next slide and focus on that. An excellent way to understand how important water is to muscle tissue is seen on the screen. If you've ever had beef jerky, they start with a piece of steak and they remove all the water by dehydrating it to give you the finished product. Your skeletal muscle is very similar. Water plays a part in not only the appearance of your muscle tissue, the volume, but it also plays a part in the function of the muscle tissue. So the next question will be, how does your muscle tissue hold on to water? And with that, we'll go to the next slide. If you refer back to the slide where it showed all the elements that comprise muscle tissue, you will recall glycogen being listed. Now glycogen plays a very important role in muscle tissue being able to retain water. So glycogen, will hold water in a one to three ratio. That means one gram of glycogen holds three grams of water. A good way to visualize this is to imagine a chocolate almond where the almond represents glycogen and the chocolate represents water. Now, something very interesting happens after a vigorous exercise session. So during recovery, if a person's nutrition is correct and if their water intake is correct, Glycogen can increase its ability to bind water up to a 1 to 17 ratio. That means that 1 gram of glycogen can now hold 17 grams of water to it. Now over time, the body will eventually reset down to the classic 1 to 3 ratio, but that just shows you the capacity of muscle tissue to absorb water. So now that we've looked at how glycogen holds water inside the muscle tissue, what other functions does glucose perform? Well, glucose comes from carbohydrates primarily. And carbohydrates will serve as a form of protection against muscle tissue. Now this is very shocking to many people who are unaware of this. And how carbohydrates protect your skeletal muscle is as follows. Now this has to do with something called energy balance. Now this is a very complicated subject, but we will discuss this in a different presentation. But simply put, it has to do with how many calories your body is burning each day versus how many calories you are taking in. Now usually people are unaware of how many calories their body is burning each day. 
and most people unfortunately do not track how many calories they are consuming. So what will often happen is a person will be in a calorie deficit. And too many times we find that people are in a very deep calorie deficit. Now what does that deficit do? Well the deficit will cause the body to go look for other energy sources inside of you. Now when it does that it's going to go to a couple places. One of the first places it will go to is the protein that you are consuming in your food. It will take some of that protein and it will convert it to sugar in the liver. Now how does it do this? Well as you're eating your protein it will take the amino acids it will take them to the liver and through a process called gluconeogenesis it will convert those to glucose now your body will then go to skeletal muscle and it will start to break down your skeletal muscle to take the amino acids to the liver to convert them to glucose now the hormone cortisol is how your body will take muscle tissue convert it to amino acids to make glucose now let's take for example a person who is on a high protein low carbohydrate diet at that point the body is taking some of their protein and converting it to sugar but let's take an extreme example let's say a person is not eating any carbohydrates to prove this all you have to do is perform a basic blood sugar check what they call it a blood glucose test and you will find that your blood has glucose in it and the way your body is producing glucose is through this process of gluconeogenesis now when a person is trying to improve their body composition the last thing they want is their muscle tissue to be utilized for glucose so this is where eating adequate amounts of carbohydrates plays a very protective role or critical role into preserving that very precious and valuable muscle tissue that you work so hard to gain. Another important role that glucose plays in the body has to do with its relationship to the hormone insulin. Now most people are aware that insulin is how the body transports glucose into the muscle cell. What many people are unaware of though is that insulin is how amino acids also get into the muscle cell. So the relationship between glucose and insulin is critical if you want to transport amino acids to help with tissue repair and for muscle growth. Now this is an area where many people will sabotage their fitness programs because they are unaware of this relationship. So when a person has a high protein, low carbohydrate diet, what happens is with the insulin levels being low, the body will start to break down skeletal muscle to transport those amino acids to the liver to convert to glucose through that process, gluconeogenesis. Now, if you've ever seen people in the gym who go year after year after year and they see no progress and no change in their body composition, this is usually one of the reasons why. So if the diet is off, you will not see the progress that you are looking for. When a person is looking to improve their body composition by building skeletal muscle, they're gonna be engaged in some form of anaerobic exercise. Now this can include weightlifting, jumping rope, sprinting, high intensity interval training and even biking. Now the beautiful part about anaerobic exercise is that the skeletal muscle can only use glucose for fuel. Now let me give you a scenario here. Let's say you get up in the morning to go to the gym. You've been asleep all night and your body has been depleting your glycogen stores. So then you get up, you don't eat breakfast, you go right to work out. And you start some type of anaerobic exercise. Well, since anaerobic exercise can only use glucose for fuel, it is looking for that stored glycogen. But since you're in a glycogen depleted state, your body's going to start breaking down skeletal muscle. Now in the morning, your cortisol level, which is a stress hormone, is at its highest level of the day. 
So that hormone starts breaking down skeletal muscle to transport the amino acids to the liver to convert to glucose through that process, gluconeogenesis. Then the body takes that glucose, takes it back to the skeletal muscle, so the muscle can then perform the functions or the exercises that you're currently engaged in. Now, another reason why it's so important to eat in the morning prior to working out or to eat before you work out regardless of the time of day is because carbohydrates, when they start entering the body, will start to lower your cortisol levels. Now, if going to the gym in the morning without eating breakfast, exercising, breaking down an excess amount of skeletal muscle sounds counterproductive, that's because it is. Let's continue with the discussion on the importance of meal timing around your workouts. Now we've gone into great detail on why it is important to eat before you exercise, but what about after you exercise? The slide on the screen talks about the post-exercise anabolic window. That means that after you complete an exercise session, it is important to consume a meal that contains both carbohydrates and protein because your body is able to pull in more amounts of glucose and amino acids to begin the recovery process. So to capitalize on this post-exercise anabolic window, it is important to consume both carbohydrates and protein if you want to maximize muscle repair. Let's expand the discussion on the importance of hydration. When a person is looking to improve their body composition, hydration plays a critical part to this. We've already learned the role that glycogen plays in holding water in muscle tissue. And this is important because if muscle tissue becomes dehydrated, the body will start to break down that tissue much faster. And it will also build muscle much slower. But what effect does dehydration have on a fat cell? Well, on the screen, you will see a picture of an adipocyte, which is another word or term for a fat cell. Dehydration in the fat cell will cause it to actually start to store more triglycerides, which means it will start to increase fat storage, while at the same time blocking the body's ability to utilize free fatty acids for energy. So to recap, dehydration will cause you to break down more skeletal muscle, while at the same time causing your body to begin to store more body fat. So if you're looking to improve your body composition, ensuring adequate hydration levels is important. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please like and subscribe. If there are any ideas you have on content you would like to see in the future, please put those suggestions in the comment section below.